Hello everyone, welcome back to Personal Events YouTube channel. This is Ronak Neroy. Friends, mutual funds have become a popular investment avenue for wealth creation ever since Amphi's mutual fund Sahi Hai campaign. The mutual fund folios have jumped to a record high of 18.15 crore with individual investors, particularly the retail investors, now holding 60% of industry's assets. The fiscal year 23-24 or FI24 turned out to be the best for the domestic mutual fund industry as assets under management or AUM sported by nearly 14 lakh crore to a record of Rs 53.4 lakh crores as of March 2024 as against 39.42 lakh crore as of March 2023 according to the Amphi data. That's an increase of 35%, the second highest since the fiscal year 21 when the industry had reported a 41% increase amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. The Indian equity markets have fared well in the last couple of years backed by encouraging earnings data. In FY24, the bellwether S&P BSC Sensex Total Return Index or TRI clocked an absolute return of 26.2%. The BSC Mid-Cap Index TRI and S&P BSC Small Cap TRI clocked an absolute return of 64.6% and 59.6% respectively as of March 29, 2024. So if you have made capital gains or profits plus earned dividends, if any, from any mutual fund investments or shares or say for some reason you booked a loss, then in this video, I will explain you what will be the tax on your mutual fund investments. First, let's talk about the capital gains on equity oriented funds. The capital gains are accounted for when you have booked a profit. In other words, when the realized sale value is greater than the cost of acquiring the units of a mutual fund scheme. In the case of equity oriented funds and or listed equity shares, if the holding period of the units is less than 12 months, it is considered as short term capital gain or STCG. However, when the units of equity oriented mutual funds and or listed equity shares are held for 12 months or more from the date of purchase or acquisition, the realized capital gains are treated as long term capital gains. Now coming to the question, how are the short term and long term capital gains taxed in the case of equity oriented funds? The short term capital gains these in case of equity oriented funds for both equity oriented mutual funds and the listed equity shares are taxed at the rate of 15% flat in, a, in the financial year, irrespective of the income tax slab applicable to you. Long term capital gains. These in the case of equity investments are taxed at the rate of 10% on the LTCG made over rupees 1 lakh in the financial year. In other words, only LTCG more than rupees 1 lakh is taxable. If the LTCG is below rupees 1 lakh, it will be exempt, tax exempt. LTCG is taxed without indexation benefit in the case of equity oriented mutual funds and listed equity shares. To protect the interest of long term investors, there is a grandfathering clause under section 112A introduced on February 1st, 2018. This makes LTCG tax prospective and the tax is levied only on the gains from February 1, 2018. For this purpose, to compute the cost of acquisition, the fair market value or FMV or actual selling price or ASP, whichever is lower is considered. Call this as value 1. Further, either this computed value that is value 1 or the actual purchase price APP, whichever is higher is considered. Thus, the LTCG where the grandfathering clause applies is computed after deducting the cost of acquisition from the sale value. In case of non-resident Indian or NRI, the tax on capital gains made will be deducted at source, STCG at 15% and LTCG at the rate of 10% without indexation benefit. Now you may ask, what if there is a capital loss? This occurs when you have booked a loss on the investment made, that is when the cost of acquisition of the unit 
or the shares is greater than the sale value obtained. The holding period rule also applies to capital loss. If you, the investor, have booked a capital loss in less than 12 months, it will be considered as short-term capital loss or STCL. Conversely, when the capital loss is incurred after having held the units of mutual funds or shares for 12 months or more, it will be treated as long-term capital loss or LTCL. Now, when you booked a capital loss, whether short-term or long-term, there is no question of tax on it. Now, coming to the question, can capital gains be set off against capital losses? Yes, that is possible. The set off and carry forward provisions under the Income Tax Act 1961 permit setting off of capital gains against the capital losses. This allows you to save on the capital gains made on the units of mutual funds and shares. That said, there are certain rules for set off and carry forward of losses. First, it should be noted that the set off cannot be against any other head of income when computing the total taxable income. In other words, the capital loss can be set off only against the capital gains head. Further, as per the rules, if there is a LTCL, it can be set off only against an LTCG. Hence, only net LTCG over rupees 1 lakh will be taxable. On the other hand, STCL or short term capital loss is allowed to be set off against both LTCG and STCG. As far as the carry forward of capital losses is concerned, in case you are not able to set off the capital losses in the same assessment year, it can be carried forward to 8 years for both short term as well as the long term capital loss. Tax loss harvesting is also permitted. What it means is that notional losses on your mutual fund and listed equity stocks portfolio can be converted to realized or actual losses. This strategy makes sense at a market high where despite the run up, certain mutual fund schemes or shares in your investment portfolio have in farewell and thus may not be worth keeping them. By booking a capital loss, you happen to reduce your tax outgo. You would be required to pay tax only on the net capital gains. Now consider this example. Say you have a LTCG of 2 lakh and STCG of 60,000 but also are witnessing a notional long term capital loss of rupees 50,000 and a short term capital loss of 40,000. By booking these losses before the end of the financial year, your net capital gain reduces to rupees 1.7 lakh instead of rupees 2.6 lakh. In case there is still a capital loss, as mentioned previously, that can also be set off against the capital gains. It can be carried forward to the next financial year for up to a maximum of 8 assessment years. Therefore, tax loss harvesting can be consciously used as a strategy by taking a closer look at your investment portfolio and the capital gains account statement. These can be sourced from your RTAs your distributor or a broker. Most of this data is available to you in a digital format. Make sure you make the best use of it. But when you do so, carefully evaluate the holding period so as to determine short term or long term as the case may be, whether for capital gains or losses. Keep in mind that tax harvesting when done sensibly may help you optimally reset your portfolio plus consolidate it and declutter it. Coming to capital gains on debt oriented funds. In case of mutual fund schemes other than the equity oriented funds that is debt oriented funds and gold mutual funds with effect from April 1, 2023, the realized capital gains made with a short term that is holding period year is less than 36 months or long term the holding period of 36 months or more in case of debt oriented funds or non-equity oriented funds are now taxed as per the tax lab applicable to you, the SSE. In other words, the debt mutual funds including gold mutual funds are now at par with bank fixed deposits as regards taxation is concerned. I have covered an article on debt funds on par with bank FDs with effect from April 1, 2023. 
I have shared the link of this article in the description box below. The indexation benefit that earlier helped to make the most of the inflation impact on the purchase value of the investment and effectively reduce the LTCG tax liability is now no longer available for debt mutual funds and gold mutual funds. Watch personal funds video, the change in tax rules for debt mutual funds. I have shared the link of this video in the description box below. For NRIs, the capital gains on non-equity schemes or debt-oriented schemes are subject to tax deduction at source. The TDS for STCG is 30%, while for LTCG, it is 20% in case of listed units and 10% in case of unlisted units. Now, if there is a capital loss on debt mutual funds, there will be no tax liability. And as I mentioned before, you could avail of the set-off and carry forward provisions under the Income Tax Act 1961. Now coming to dividends earned from mutual funds. How are dividend earned taxed? The dividend earned from mutual fund units known as Income Distribution Come Capital Withdrawal or IDCW and shares are taxed as per your tax lab. In other words, at the marginal rate of taxation. Want to know in detail what is IDCW in mutual funds? I have shared the link of an article in the description box below. If the dividend or IDCW received is greater than rupees 5000 in a financial year, tax is deducted at source. The TDS rate in such a case is 10% as per section 194 of the Income Tax Act and in case if you are an NRI, the TDS on the distributed income or dividend is at the rate of 20% plus the applicable surcharge and health and education says. To sum up, in this world nothing is certain but debt and taxes, said Benjamin Franklin. While you may be earning a decent sum as your gross total income, which includes income from salary or business and profession, house property and any other income, it is important to keep a tab on the tax aspect in the interest of your financial well-being. Hard-earned money legitimately saved from tax is ultimately earned. Hence, make a conscious and best effort to save tax wisely by investing in suitable tax saving avenues and utilize certain provisions of the income tax acts wisely to save tax. Be thoughtful in your approach. That's it from me today. For more guidance on mutual fund investments and, fun and personal finance, subscribe to Personal Funds YouTube channel and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends and relatives. Signing off for now, happy tax planning and investing. Investment in securities market are subject to market risks. Read all related documents carefully before investing.